Amid the vast ocean, where giant ships battle fierce winds and relentless waves, there exists a silent force that keeps everything anchored. Colossal anchor chains, as massive as steel monsters, weighing tens of tons yet engineered with millimeter precision. Behind the rough, cold surface of each massive steel link lies an extraordinary transformation. From raw iron ore deep underground to alloy steel forged at thousands of degrees Celsius, under blazing heat and immense pressure, each steel bar is bent, welded, and calibrated with absolute precision, forming links strong enough to withstand the pulling force of a skyscraper amid the raging sea. Join us as we uncover how humans transform iron and fire into colossal anchor chains, the unseen pillars that keep mighty vessels steady against the boundless power of the ocean. The story of the colossal anchor chain begins deep underground, at the iron ore mines where humans extract the very element that forms the backbone of steel. Here, vast deposits stretch across tens of square miles, filled with iron oxides in shades of deep red, brown, and gray, the origin of one of the most resilient metals in modern industry. Iron ore is found across the world, but the largest reserves lie in Australia, Brazil, and Russia, which together supply hundreds of millions of tons of raw material to steel mills around the globe every year. Beneath the seemingly lifeless surface lies a resource shaped over millions of years, waiting to be awakened by the power of modern mining technology. Geological engineers begin by surveying the terrain, drilling deep holes dozens of feet down, and loading them with industrial explosives, a mixture of ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel. Each blast, timed with millisecond precision, can shatter thousands of cubic yards of rock, the equivalent of several tons of TNT exposing the rich ore below. Moments later, gigantic hydraulic excavators with buckets holding up to 40 tons swing into action, loading the ore onto ultra-heavy dump trucks weighing between 200 and 300 tons. At large-scale mines, more than 1,000 tons of explosives may be used each month, setting off hundreds of controlled blasts that free millions of tons of ore. The entire operation functions like a massive machine running in perfect rhythm. Every scoop, every blast, every haul precisely coordinated, propelling the iron ore from the depths of the earth into its transformation into steel. The very material that will become the mighty chains holding the ocean's giants in place. Once transported to the plant, the iron ore enters a system of high-capacity crushers where massive steel rollers weighing tens of tons crush the raw rocks into smaller fragments. The material is then ground even finer inside continuously rotating ball mills. This process maximizes the release of iron from the ore while greatly increasing its surface area, making the next separation stage far more efficient. The result is a fine, uniform iron ore powder, perfectly suited for refining. In the flotation stage, this powdered ore is mixed with water to form a thick slurry and fed into enormous flotation tanks. Carefully measured surface active chemicals are added, altering the properties of the particles. The iron-bearing grains become hydrophobic, while impurities such as silica and clay remain hydrophilic. As compressed air is blown through the bottom of the tanks, millions of tiny bubbles form, clinging to the iron particles and lifting them toward the surface. Layer after layer of reddish-gray froth, rich in iron, is skimmed off and collected through multiple cycles until the desired purity is reached. Meanwhile, the waste rock and other impurities sink to the bottom and are completely removed. The result is a refined concentrate with an iron content exceeding 65 to 67 percent, ready for the metallurgical phase, where it will be melted, purified, and reborn as steel the very soul of the massive anchor chains that hold the giants of the sea in place. After obtaining the iron concentrate from the flotation tanks, the iron-rich slurry is sent to a filtration and dewatering system. The suspension passes through vacuum filters, either rotary drum or disc type, where the pressure difference draws out the water while the fine ore particles remain as a moist cake on the filter surface. This process significantly reduces the ore's moisture content, 
ensuring the ideal conditions for the subsequent pelletizing and firing stages that will transform the material into durable steel pellets for the next phase of smelting. From the filtration tanks, the iron-rich concentrate is collected as a fine dry powder with its signature reddish-brown color. However, in this loose state, the material is too powdery to be fed directly into the furnace. To solve this, the powder is mixed with a small amount of water and binding agents, then fed into enormous inclined pelletizing discs. As the discs rotate steadily, the fine particles begin to cling and cluster together, gradually forming small, evenly sized pellets. By the time they roll off the discs, millions of damp iron ore pellets have taken shape, round, smooth, and with just the right moisture content, ready to move on to the firing stage that will harden them for the demanding world of steelmaking. From the traveling grate, the iron ore pellets are fed into a rotary kiln, a massive steel cylinder stretching dozens of feet in length, set at a slight incline and rotating slowly. Inside, the temperature is maintained between 2,190 and 2,460 degrees Fahrenheit, creating a uniformly distributed high heat environment along the entire chamber. As the kiln drum turns, the pellets roll and tumble continuously through the stream of hot gases, being baked evenly from the core outward. During this process, impurities are burned away while the iron particles fuse together, forming a solid, dense, and uniform structure. By the time they exit the kiln, the pellets have reached the required hardness and density, ready to move into the cooling stage before becoming the essential feedstock for the steel furnaces that will give birth to the colossal anchor chains of the sea. Once the iron ore has been pelletized or sintered, it joins the glowing red-hot coke fresh from the ovens, all fed together into the top of the blast furnace, the very heart of the entire iron-making process. Inside this towering steel structure, rising hundreds of feet high, layers of iron ore, coke, and limestone are carefully stacked before meeting a powerful blast of hot air blown from the base, heated to more than 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The coke ignites, generating carbon monoxide that reacts with the iron oxides, reducing them into molten iron that flows to the bottom of the furnace, glowing bright red. At the same time, impurities combine with the limestone to form a layer of slag that floats above the molten metal. But this intense process also releases enormous amounts of carbon dioxide, fine dust, and toxic fumes, making the blast furnace, despite being the beating heart of the steel industry, one of the largest industrial sources of emissions on the planet. Right after leaving the blast furnace, the stream of molten iron is transferred into the Basic Oxygen Furnace, or BOF, a massive steel vessel lined with heat-resistant refractory bricks. From above, a long lance is lowered into the molten metal, blasting pure oxygen at supersonic speed onto its surface. The oxygen reacts violently with carbon and other impurities, generating intense heat and sending jets of flame shooting high above the furnace mouth. Under this tremendous chemical and thermal pressure, the carbon content drops rapidly, transforming the once brittle, impure pig iron into refined molten steel, stronger, more ductile, and ready to take shape in the next stage of its journey. Immediately after that, the molten steel is directed into a continuous casting system, where it flows into water-cooled molds and solidifies into billets, which may take the shape of square bars, wide slabs, or rectangular blooms. This is the very first form of steel. From these billets, the shaping journey begins. They are reheated and passed through massive rolling mills, where giant rollers weighing tens of tons press and stretch the metal continuously. Thick slabs are transformed into thin steel sheets. Blooms are rolled into coiled strips, and square billets become long steel bars. With each pass, each thunderous turn of the rollers, the steel moves one step closer to its destiny, rising as a skyscraper, spanning as a bridge, or forming the backbone of an automobile. From the blazing furnace to the roaring mills, the entire process becomes a symphony of metal, where steel is reborn and given the shape the world has been waiting for. At the manufacturing workshop, solid round steel bars are received from the steel mill and inspected once more for their grade, diameter, and hardness before entering the cutting line. 
These bars are specially selected for anchor chain production, typically measuring 6 to 10 inches in diameter and refined to marine-grade alloy steel standards to withstand extreme loads and resist corrosion in harsh ocean environments. The fully automated hydraulic cutting machines operate continuously, positioning each bar with laser sensors before the blade descends. Every cut produces a short billet with a precisely calculated length, just enough to be bent into a single chain link after heating. Each cutting cycle lasts only a few seconds, enabling thousands of billets to be prepared within a single work shift. After cutting, the billets are checked for dimensional accuracy and weight consistency to ensure perfect uniformity, then transferred via roller conveyors directly to the primary furnace for the next stage of heating. After being cut, the steel billets are continuously fed into the primary heating furnace, where gas or industrial oil burners generate temperatures between 1,800 and 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the chamber, infrared sensors and recirculating fans ensure even heat distribution, allowing the steel to reach the perfect plastic state without melting, maintaining a stable metallic structure and preparing it for the next stage of forming. As the billets leave the furnace at around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, they are transferred to the hydraulic bending press, a semi-automatic machine where much of the operation is still guided by skilled human hands. Operators use heat-resistant clamps to position each billet precisely, adjusting the joint alignment and bending speed through an electromechanical control panel. With a pressing force ranging from 1,000 to 1,500 tons, the hydraulic system wraps the glowing steel around a hardened steel die, shaping each link with remarkable precision. The process is supported by pressure sensors and electromechanical angle gauges, allowing workers to monitor curvature and applied force in real time. Every movement requires a delicate balance between craftsmanship and technical control. Because at this stage, the red-hot steel is extremely sensitive to temperature, and bending too quickly or holding too long can cause surface cracking. To prevent overheating, a recirculating cooling oil system sprays continuously around the bending shafts, stabilizing temperature and protecting the dies. Once the desired shape is achieved, the operator lowers the hydraulic arm, releases the clamp, and verifies the curvature using a mechanical gauge before moving the piece onto a heat-resistant conveyor. Each finished link can weigh between 200 and 400 pounds and measure over 2 feet in length, remaining glowing red as it moves on to the next stage, welding the links into an unbreakable chain. When both ends of the billet have been fully aligned, a mechanical scraper swiftly slides across the joint to remove any remaining oxide layer and surface impurities. This step takes only a few seconds, performed while the metal is still glowing red and malleable, allowing the blade to clean down to the pure steel beneath. Immediately after, the flash butt welding system is activated. A powerful alternating current passes through the joint, generating high electrical resistance that concentrates intense heat at the contact point. Within seconds, the temperature at the billet edges soars beyond 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, causing the steel margins to soften and glow bright white. Once the ideal plastic state is reached, high-capacity hydraulic cylinders apply hundreds of tons of pressure, forcing the two ends together. This immense pressure compresses the heated metal, expelling excess material outward as a bright molten flash a visible sign that the two steel sections have fused completely at the molecular level. After the force is released, the solidified joint is allowed to cool gradually, preparing for the next stage of flashing removal and link rounding that will perfect its final shape. After welding and cooling, each chain link is transferred to the quality inspection area, one of the most rigorous stages in the entire production line. The process begins with a visual examination of the weld surface to detect any visible defects such as pores, cracks, or geometric distortions. Next, the link is placed inside a 3D laser measurement chamber, where the system scans its entire contour to ensure that the radius, curvature, and wall thickness all remain within the specified tolerance limits. This is followed by ultrasonic testing a technique that uses high-frequency sound waves to detect voids, separations, or internal discontinuities invisible to the naked eye. 
If any reflected signal indicates irregularities, the defective link is immediately rejected for remelting or reworking. Additionally, a sample from each production batch is subjected to a hydraulic tensile test where pulling force is gradually increased until it exceeds the design threshold. Only when the link withstands load several times greater than its operational requirement is the entire batch approved. The result of this meticulous inspection process is a chain composed of links perfectly uniform in both form and mechanical properties. Possessing exceptional strength, ductility, and load-bearing capacity, ready to enter service as colossal anchor chains that hold ships steady against the power of the sea. From raw iron ore deep beneath the earth to the massive steel links stretched taut across the open sea, this journey is the culmination of heat, force, and precision. Every stage from mining, metallurgy, and billet rolling to heating, bending, welding, and inspection is carefully controlled to create a product that may seem simple, yet carries the immense responsibility of holding the maritime world in place. If you want to keep exploring the colossal manufacturing processes behind the world's greatest engineering feats, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, because this is only one small link in the vast industrial chain that keeps our world moving.